Now, let us talk about the endosperm part, endosperm development, how the formation of endosperm takes place once the fertilization has taken place or to be very specific when the primary endosperm cell has undergone the fusion of the polar nuclei with the male gamete. Now, the three different types of, nucle uh, of endosperm that could be formed are listed over here. We did talk about in the previous lesson. The first one is nuclear, second one is cellular and the third one is helluvial. Over there, we only talked about the names. Now, we are going to discuss about the formation of each of these. So, the first one that we have, the type of endosperm listed over here is the nuclear type of endosperm. In the nuclear type of endosperm, you know the cell precursor to the entire endosperm which is in a way going to crush the new cellus. The first cell of the endosperm is primary endosperm cell. This cell undergoes repeated divisions that is mitotic divisions, okay. But these mitotic divisions are not followed by cytokinesis that means karyokinesis is taking place you are getting many nuclei being formed as a result of mitotic division but cytokinesis is not taking place cytokinesis is absent that means the condition that arises is that of a syncytium so supposedly this was the primary endosperm cell in the beginning and uh, like this this was the primary endosperm cell over here it had the embryo now if i am taking this as the embryo and this as the primary endosperm cell you can make it out that this is the micropylar end this is embryo this let it be denoted by e and this is the primary endosperm cell it undergoes mitotic divisions cytoplasm is getting accumulated over here, nuclei are being formed, okay, many nucleus are being formed, vacuoles are being created, it has vacuole like this, these are the small vacuoles, there is repeated division, there are many nuclei that are being formed in the central part, the vacuole arranges itself like this, the nuclei get arranged towards the periphery but till now as you can see no cytokinesis has taken place embryo lies over here no cytokinesis is taking place okay like this the vacuole comes in the central region later on what happens is soon the cells once they have arranged themselves towards the periphery there would be formation of cellular walls around the nucleus that means now the cytokinesis is taking place along with here we see the embryo lying over here this is the embryo cytokinesis the vacuole becomes smaller and we have the endosperm being formed which has nutritive material stored inside its cells for the nourishment of the embryo okay the central part is the vacuole this one earlier this vacuole was huge in size the nuclei were arranged in such a way that they were towards the periphery there were no cytoplasmic or uh, there were no cell walls later on cytokinesis took place cell walls were being formed and this is how nuclear endosperm is being formed now this is the nuclear endosperm type over here we have two types of uh, nuclear endosperm as in the case of coconut you must have seen that sometimes the free nuclear endosperm persists you see in a coconut what we have that there lies coconut water surrounded by white kernel sort of substance which is also edible now this white is that part of the endosperm that has developed cell walls so this has become cellular endosperm though the endosperm is nuclear only it is cellular nuclear endosperm and the inner one because it has not developed the cell wall still yet it is highly vacuolated it is free nuclear endosperm 
So, we have the type of nuclear endosperm over here, it does not get completely converted into cellular. So, it at a stage where the central part is having the nuclei without cell walls and the side of, uh, part of the sides is having those cells which have developed the walls is the best example as seen in the case of coconut. Okay? So, the coconut water you often drink to quench your thirst in uh, summer time is nothing but free nuclear endosperm whose cell walls have not developed. Moving further, like in the nuclear uh, endosperm, we had many nuclei being formed, but the cytokinesis was not taking place as a result of which there was a free nuclear condition over here. The primary endosperm nucleus cause many repeated mitotic karyokinesis divisions without cytokinesis. But in the case of cellular one, that is cellular endosperm, you would find simply formation of cell wall as soon as first division takes place. So, supposedly this is the primary endosperm cell, this is the embryo. The first nuclear division resulted in formation of two nuclei which would be separated by a cell wall. The next division could result in four. Again, you are going to find cell wall between them. Okay? So, in this way, the cellular endosperm develops. Most of the plants have nuclear endosperm, you find the cereals which can uh, comprise many monocots. You have apple, you have grasses, all these have nuclear endosperm. Talking about cellular endosperm that we have discussed about, it is present in the Thura, Petunia, balsam, these are the examples you have to remember. And the last one very rarely found is hilobial endosperm where it is similar to nuclear endosperm. Supposedly, you have the first mitotic division having the cytokinesis but later on entire development is similar to that of nuclear endosperm. Now, here again you have the embryo, you have the primary endosperm nucleus. The first division would be such that if we have to trace the development of endosperm, you get two cells, one would be chilazole and one would be micropylar. So, the endosperm development in both the chilazole and micropylar cell would be similar to as seen in the nuclear development. Later on the vacuole would come in between and then there could be separation by cell wall, cell wall could come into scene, they could get developed. Later on developments I would not make over here, rest developments are similar to nuclear endosperm, but the first stage is such that the nucleus, primary endosperm nucleus of the primary endosperm cells get divided into two nuclei which is followed by cytokinesis. So, the first division has cytokinesis followed by the later mitotic divisions where cytokinesis is absent. So, cytokinesis seen only in first division, first mitotic division within the endosperm and once the division has taken place and resulted into two cells, one at the chalazole and other at the micropylar end, we have two different cells in which the nuclear divisions are similar as seen in the nuclear endosperm. So, this is what you have to learn in the endosperm formation, how, it's, uh, how it takes place, what all are the types of uh, different endosperms that are seen. To pile up the chapter, we have another term apart from these three terms that is endospermous seed and non endospermous seed. 
that is to be remembered and we are done with endosperms. Uh, endospermous seed otherwise known as albuminous and the second one is non endospermous seeds. What is the purpose of endosperm that we have been emphasizing time and again that it provides nourishment to whom the embryo. Now the embryo consumes the endosperm when it starts developing as soon as the second stage of the post fertilization changes begins where the embryo starts developing it consumes whatever is being stored in the cells of endosperm. So also not so also. At the same time, this endosperm when it is growing, it is pushing the new cellar cells, okay? It is crushing, rather cr crushing instead of pushing, that would be a better word. And the nucellus is almost crushed. The endosperm is being consumed, nucellus is gone. And if the endosperm is completely consumed, that means the seed becomes dry, that is known as non endospermous seed or we call it non albuminous seeds but in certain cases like the cereals what happens is that uh, example is cereals castors uh, castor seeds not castors castor and of course as i give you the example of coconut fresh coconut cereals and castors they have the endosperm remaining in them that it means is not completely consumed. The endosperm is not completely consumed by the growing embryo. It remains within the seed and the seed is known as endospermous seed. Okay. Supposedly the endosperm is completely consumed by the embryo. The other one would be known as non endospermous seed. Example is P. All right. So we have these two types of the seeds. At times what happens is that Though endosperm crushes the nucellar cells, it also persists. That means the nucellus is also persistent in the seed. It is present in the seed. Such nucellus is known as perisperm. Remember this term. Okay. And with perisperm, what it is, the rem remnants of nucellus within the seeds, even after endosperm tried to crush it to the maximum levels, it sustains and is known as perisperm, we pile up this lesson.